when we first got back together and we were talking about reissues and re-releases, we were also, you know, out of the other side of our mouths, grumbling about the idea that it's just going to be nostalgia and we don't want that. And, and it doesn't, the music doesn't sound nostalgic. I think there's some validity to the idea that, that had we not made a new album, we wouldn't be so happy about anniversaries and re-releases and repackaging. Um, but in the back of my mind, I always knew that if we, if we got together in any way, even you know, it, once we were in a room playing songs, we're going to start creating something new. I knew that was going to happen because it, it's not, we were never a band that had to try to do that. If we're together and there's four of us and everyone has ideas, it's, it's going to happen. Sort of first person um, and it's, it's somewhat vague description. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's like this t sort of tiny voice of, of a forgotten person or someone that feels forgotten or powerless. Um, and I think that there are bedrooms full of those people in the world and especially in the U.S., you know. This is a culture that thrives on making a name for yourself, a face for yourself. Uh, uh, we're goal-oriented, we're achievement-oriented, even if that achievement is just to become famous for no reason, you know. You're, you're on a reality show, you do nothing, you're not smart, you're not brilliant, you haven't created anything. You just, maybe you fight with your dad a lot and that's funny. And that's it, ta-da! <laughs> um, and, and so we're sort of growing up in this culture feeling like we've, we have to do something that distinguishes ourselves in a country full of you know, 350 million people where it's impossible for every single one to distinguish themselves somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, I think, is one of the main reasons why we have these, um, these horrible incidents of somebody walking in a, a public place and shooting everyone. Uh, what happened to John Lennon was that, you know, this kid that wanted to make a name for himself and, and uh, figured out, out that that was a quick way to do it. And he wasn't wrong. It worked. It was one of my favorites. Mm. I, I remember getting into an argument, not an argument, but just a discussion with Ben where I was, I had to convince him to sing it. He sang the demo and played everything on it. And, and uh, it's, it was amazing and we all loved it. And, um, but I didn't feel like I was going to capture uh, what he what he was trying to do on it, you know, he was singing essentially lyrics that he felt would come from the perspective of like a child and was singing it like that. And he just had this mood that was incredible. And that kind of, in a way, is is the song that reminds me of what our attitude was going into making the album, because he he had said if if you don't sing on it and you're not playing guitar on it, then you're then it's a song on a Soundgarden album that you're not even on. And I remember thinking, that's what we should be trying to do, which is make the song the best song that it can be and, and not worry about anything else, you know? There are no sort of rules of band. And uh, I think that made, that theory made amazing Beatles albums, it made amazing Clash albums, it made amazing albums. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not to have to do that, but to be open to doing it. Um, and I think it worked really well. I was always kind of acting out in a way and, and was irritated with the notion that when Soundgarden started as a band and we were, we were just struggling to get an indie label to release us, there was this notion of alternative and, and alternative was a word, it wasn't a genre and it meant an alternative to anything that's on the radio which was like commercial metal and Billy Joel and uh, so it, there were no rules and then all of a sudden um, you know, you kind of had this REM moment and then this idea that alternative had to be um, somewhat androgynous. Uh, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't be in any way aggressive. Um, it was jangly. Uh, if you were, you know, a guitar band sort of couldn't have keyboards. You couldn't d have a trumpet. You couldn't do anything except for this, this rigid sort of uh, template. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to smash that. That didn't make any sense. You know, how did we? How did this whole this whole generation of bands and musicians that came from a free for all of post punk indie immediately corner themselves in this attitude of we can only do five things? And and the Pixies seemed to be like the best version of that. So why bother? You know, they're that the best version already exists. I was telling my wife uh, last week the just reflecting on the weirdness of that period because the, the fact that I shaved my head showed up in a blurb in the entertainment part of Time magazine. 
And I remember being disturbed by that, thinking people really rely on this for important international news, and, and uh, th that's strange. I, you know, is that the best we could do? You know, all, all of our lives being musicians and, and songwriters and killing ourselves to create this, and, and all they're writing about is, is who did what with their hair. But it also made me glad that I did it. And it's like, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I didn't want to march to anyone's drummer. I don't think Soundgarden really was ever capable of it. No, everyone was against that attitude from the very beginning. Um, and I think what happens is a lot of times in popular culture, bands start out that way, but if they become successful, they don't really have anything to fight against anymore. Musicians are mostly nerdy guys that weren't good at sports or um, were, were socially awkward somehow and ended up in a bedroom listening to records and playing an instrument. And uh, sometimes when you're accepted, uh, that edge goes away. But other times when you're accepted, there's a conflict. And the conflict is, oh, why now? You know, you didn't like me then, mm -hmm. so now, uh, you know, my FUs are going to get bigger. And I think that, that Soundgarden was sort of one of those. We actually chose video directors for uh, Jesus Christ Pose and, and then Rusty Cage based on the Head Like a Hole video. Because we saw that, uh, loved the song, loved the video, and it was just this different um, kind of uh, approach to industrial punk rock, metal, but maybe none of those things. I, I was a fan of industrial music, and, and um, but you, you sort of had to suffer through the fact that there tended to be no songs. <laughs> and suddenly, here's a song. And, and it's, it's almost like a song that, that we could have done or written, um, but presented in a different way. And, and so it had this moment of, of uh, influence on me.